one. Greetings and welcome to the Social Blade Show, a weekly podcast dedicated to bringing you the hottest topics affecting the social media landscape. I'm your host, J.D. Rucker. I'm Genocide312, Patrick Furbies. I'm Jason, uh, a.k.a. Ergo, a.k.a. Herstig. I'm Victor, um, also known as B.T. Guerrero. And we are short one person today. We are short our esteemed co-host, Aaron Ryan. Um, apparently, in Canada, they have mooses, and she was hit by a moose. Isn't that true, Pat? Uh, that's what I heard. I mean, I thought that was kind of odd, but then I look back when I was a couple years ago, I got ran over by a horse, and the damn thing just kept stepping on me and stepping on me and stepping on me. I didn't know when it was going to end. <laughs> uh, lucky for me, the manager from Kmart came out and unplugged it, so I ended up being okay. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, damn, did I tell that? <laughs> you did. You said it. You, you said it live. And now I've got to move it back over. Either that or i got to move my camera over because I just covered myself up. Is that what everybody else sees? There we go. All right. Uncovered. Beautiful. How is everybody doing today? Pat, how are you doing? Yeah. I, well, today, uh, well, not today. My son got his, my oldest son got his driver's license, and I got him the thing that all young drivers should have when they get their driver's license. And what is that? It's a kit. It's a can of fart spray, so when he gets pulled over for speeding or running a red light, what he'll do is just shoot that off, and just when he rolls down the window, and the police officer gets to goes, hey, I gotta, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just, I gotta go so bad, and he goes, gee, just get out of here, kid. <laughs> well, I hope it works. <laughs> you know, I never use the fart spray excuse. That just wasn't my thing. Um, we do have a sponsor this week. As you all know, last week we had a sponsor. Um, this week we have a new sponsor. We are being sponsored by Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. If you haven't seen it yet, please go. doesn't matter if it's just underage kids running around with sticks, zapping each other, and, and all that good stuff. Um, I do have a spoiler alert. We do find out in this episode that Voldemort is actually Harry's father. So, you heard it here from... Dun, dun. Dun-dun-dun-dun. Uh, Jamie obviously uh, reads all the books. So, yes, um, I've read all the books. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I, I've, read, I've read all three books, and um, it's, it's such an amazing series, you know, with um, when, uh, when Indy first, first gets a hold of the, the, uh, little, the big mask in the Temple of Doom. That was just amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. Jason, how are you doing this week? Oh, I'm doing pretty good myself. I'm actually uh, excited uh, because this weekend um, I'm going down again to uh, the Raleigh area, and uh, I'm going to be, as long as I can find something, I'm going to be placing an offer on a house for my first house. So, I'm congratulations! Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. That is very awesome. Uh, I, I have a couple of uh, things, a couple of choices marked out right now. I just got to decide between them. So. Very cool. Extreme. Extremely. Vic, how you doing? Uh, you know, I'm doing great. Um, you know, I've uh, been a little busy all over the place today. Today was uh, pretty fun. Um, actually, it was a little LA Times social media discussion uh, led by at Srinet, um, who's a, a professor from Columbia who uh, teaches journalism. And so I came to get some perspective as to, you know, what these college kids are learning about social media and how uh, tech is impacting uh, the information world, so it, it was interesting, you know, it was interesting to, to get that kind of uh, insight. Excellent. And normally I'd ask Erin, but she, you know, the whole moose, Kmart moose thing. We are, yeah. starting, we are starting a new segment this week called The Week in Social Media. Um, little tidbits of information. Uh, for example, TechCrunch reports that massive video site YouTube is ending its support of IE6 soon. So, all four of you out there that still use IE6, it's um, it's time to officially let it go. You won't be, you won't have any support from YouTube for very much longer. So move on. I'm actually, I'm actually embarrassed to say that I, I do have IE6 still. Oh, uh, I don't actually wow. use it, but uh, I, I just, you know, if you have to keep IE on your computer, I, I just don't want to upgrade to seven or eight. So I do have IE6. Well, I was able to see the message. If you go on IE6 to YouTube, you'll actually get a message at the top of your screen. Thing that the browser support is ending. You know, I mean, I 
I would love to have an Atari Entertainment System <laughs> too. Commodore 64. Oh, man, my the the computer that I grew up on. But yeah, it, it's time to move on. We're already on what like IE 14 or something like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, Firefox. Yeah. I mean the the uh, the much beleaguered Chrome browser is, is twice as good as IE six. So yeah, time to let it go if you're still using it. Facebook has officially passed the 250 million users mark. Information week reports that the uh, the gigantic social networking site added about 50 million users just in the last three months. So it's officially wow. bigger than MySpace. That's um. That's pretty big news. Uh, not that it wasn't expected, but you know the the MySpacers grow up and then they uh, they go into Facebook and then they get older and they they hop on on Twitter and then they get older than that and they hop back on MySpace. So uh, it's a, it's a it's a morbid cycle. Um, strangely, in sync with uh, pedophilia. Um, as a result, though, BNet reports that MySpace is taking it in stride and they're trying to reinvent themselves. They would like to become the entertainment portal. Quite possible. We'll see how, we'll see how that works out for them. Readers of the Linux section on Reddit discovered a Twitter bot was tweeting stories listed on the site without any attribution. As punishment, Redditors decided to turn the bot into their own puppet. Basically, they started using that section and posting stories on there and having the Twitter bot tweet them out and saying whatever they wanted to say and most of what they wanted the Twitter bot to say we can't say on this show um, but let's just say <laughs> that was very funny a moral of the story can you, I say it <laughs> you can say just now not while we're, we're recording um, you don't want to mess with Reddit they read it's they, they they take this stuff pretty seriously and that yeah. is all of the briefs for the week uh, all of these the links to these stories will be on the show notes um, on the socialblade.com slash show we have a special guest with us, or at least at least a few, as far as I know. Um, yeah, Jason, you you were able to round up a couple of very important ones, didn't you? Yeah. Um, over the past weekend, or this previous weekend, um, I spent a lot of my time watching these guys. Uh, we have Ben and John uh, from the Mario Marathon, who single-handedly uh, raised twenty-nine thousand dollars for the Child's Play charity over the weekend. Um, so, welcome to the show, guys. Hi. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, you got a, a dog also. Is that a couch dog? No, it's not. We have three oh, guests. It's, awesome dog. it's not my dog. Not this time, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, guys, uh, Brian, um, first off, uh, what gave you the idea? What, what uh, did you do? 97 hours uh, playing video games. Well, why did you do it? Well, I'd, I'd seen some other guys do something like this on Justin TV, and they just kind of did it for fun over a weekend at college, and they started getting donations, I think, for pizza, and it, it turned into a little bit bigger thing. I think they raised a couple thousand bucks, and they decided to give what they didn't want to charity. Um, and I thought, you know, if you really organized that kind of thing, you'd be able to do it really well. We did it last year and raised about $12,000, and then learned a lot and decided we could do it again and do it even better, and it worked. Yeah, uh, <laughs> double day events on there. Yeah, you did a great job this year. Um, what uh, what did you do this year to make it such a success? Like, how did the word get spread out? Well, we had kind of a core group of people that were really into it last year. So we maybe had a thousand people or five hundred people that we we had on a mailing list or that had contacted us last year that we thought we could get the word out to these people or they kept in touch with us through our forums or something. Um, so, and then I followed up with several of the media sites that published this last year. And following the event in 2008, the game marathon, playing video games for a long time on the internet, kind of became a fad. It's pretty cheap to do. You just buy a webcam or a capture card or something. So there were lots of these. And big, big media sites like Kotaku or Go Nintendo or something, um, they were just kind of not publishing this stuff because a lot of people would say, hey, we're going to do this, and then it would just kind of flop, or their mom would come in and say, turn the TV off. Um, so they, they kind of lost lost their buzz. So we knew we weren't going to be able to get immediate publicity on those big sites. So we, we really focused on, we knew up front, we could, we, just because of the length of the event, we could probably get something on, on the dig, get the front page on that, um, and then 
using Twitter. Last year we, we use a chat, but we decided if we had people communicate with us through Twitter, they're asking us a question while at the same time telling all their friends, so it, it expanded the audience greatly. So you guys even get onto the trending topics, if I recall, this weekend on Sunday, okay? On Sunday we, we made it up to the second highest thing on the trending topics. We were unable to overtake Chuck Norris. <laughs> hey, Chuck. Oh, so the <laughs> but uh, just even getting to the second trending topic, though, that, that's just absolutely amazing. We were really happy when we got on top of Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's always nice. a plus. Call. So, so uh, Twitter really did help then. Uh, this year. Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing thing. I, I've never really been a, a huge fan of Twitter for my personal use. I don't think my life's interesting enough that everyone needs to hear about it, but... I have I have liked to follow things when someone people were going to E three this year for video game stuff and you could follow the Twitter feeds and kind of get just short updates without having to read big articles. You could kind of follow things that way. And I thought it was the perfect thing for this kind of event. Well, great. Um, everyone, uh, later on uh, after the show, refresh uh, the Social Blade page and in the show notes, uh, Brian put together a great graph here that. Uh, Shows win stories uh, hit dig, which he hit three, hit dig three times. Okay, uh, and he graphs it uh, with how many ones they got, uh, along with the donations at the time, and how many tweets were happening, and how many people were viewing. It's just uh, wow. if you like statistics, just an amazing graph to look at. So no, check it out on one of these show notes. Does it have any pictures of um, you guys on top of Megan Fox? No, it doesn't. Ah. <laughs> Ah, right. oh, someone should have taken a screenshot of that, actually. And once again, any pictures from the trendy topics? I think we, we probably have one somewhere, but so I, I don't have it in the graph. Is it in the uh, fan art section on your site? It could be. I can look for it there. There's a lot of stuff to dig through. Okay, so also check out the MarioMarathon.com, and uh, there's a fan art section there. and Hopefully it'll be in there. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much for join here, guys. Um, feel free to uh, stick around for the rest of the show, or if you have something else, I uh, can drop off also. But um, way to go. Uh, $29,000 in 97 hours. That's pretty insane. Very nice. Very nice. You know, Thank you. if I can't get anybody to pay me any money to play video games, uh, what you guys have done is just its phenomenal. I, amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially yep. especially Mario. Yeah, thank, that rocks. Yeah, thank you. That absolutely wrong. Yes. Definitely thank you guys for coming on. We do, do have another special guest available with us today. We have the, uh, well, let me let Pat introduce him because uh, I think he's closest to Pat's heart. Well, this is a long time, uh, a gentleman that's been in social media for, God, just a little over a year and a half, almost two years, but I think two years in December, named Louis Bauer. Uh, 12th all-time digger with nearly 900 pops and over 40% pop ratio. Uh, he's got over 52,000 followers in um, Twitter. Louie, are you there? What's dig? There you go. Quit rubbing that in, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I wasn't trying to make a shot. I was just trying to make a shot. <laughs> <laughs> he gets insulted. So, um, it's funny. <sighs> what is your... Uh, uh, your uh, website, www.skateboardingmagazine.com. What can you tell us about that? Um, it's about skateboarding. Yeah, I mean, is that why you got into social media? Is it, uh, you know, why did you uh, decide to get into social media? Is it a way, a way to promote that? I mean, what was your goals behind doing it? Um, turning all news into skateboarding-related news, but I was unsuccessful. People don't seem to care too much. Well, so not it's all enough good. people. Yeah. Not enough people, but it's all good. I influenced it a little bit. We got some. Uh, we got some skating on the front page. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's that, the. Uh, the. Um, yeah. I. Uh, I have my uh, skate blog, and um, I was. Uh, you know, I got involved in that to uh, kind of promote that. You can uh, submit your own. Uh, your own blog a little bit, and um, a lot of other random content, a lot more. So that's how I got started. That I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there, 
I have talked with you in the past before from Levi I am delight and um um tell us about some of the X game stars and uh skating stars that you've met and know. Now I know one that's actually been in movies and uh has video games named after him. But um you know who I'm referring to? Um I, I would probably say Tony, I would imagine. Yeah. Unless Didn't you tell me that you like uh, Tony Hawk? That's what I just said. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. Just up. clean the wax out of your ears, buddy. <laughs> JD, do you have any questions for him before I get into some other stuff? No, I definitely do. You know, you um, you started well after a lot of people. You made such an impact and dig uh, as a lot of new people and even even seasoned people who haven't been as successful as you um, are trying to get on the front page. What is your if you could if you could break it down to thirty seconds, what would you say is the best piece of advice you can give to a digger? Build a strong network. And then the second piece of advice is find good content. And the third piece of advice is don't submit your tired ass blog over and over again three times a day. <laughs> and then when you say find good content, where where do you find your content? Or where would you recommend? You don't have to give up your best sources, but what would you recommend that a uh, an experienced or even a new new user might go to get some excellent content? Well, luckily, I have you on the phone here, so you can just go ahead and tell people where the content comes from because we get it from the same place. <laughs> I myself, I just go to uh, to skateboardingmagazine.com and um, <laughs> submit everything that I can. And when I'm done with that, I go to um, I go to socialblade.com slash show, and I submit every single article I find there. <laughs> oh, see, we're, we're right on, we're, we're right off track. Okay. Good idea, I like that. Yeah. Perfect. You know, I so know JD's the one that sniped me on the skateboard stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, okay. Actually, that site might be called crack.com. Crack.com, sure. there you go. And what do yeah. you know about crack? I noticed that you submitted crack yesterday. Or this morning, rather. Yeah, I was up a little early and uh, saw a story drop. So, uh, you know, I I've been known to uh, use that as a source. They have some funny stuff. Any others? Any 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 places that you consider to be a sh an absolute sure thing front page? Well, if uh, Ergo's not bearing it, Apod's kind of fun. Apod, what is uh, that? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. What is APOD? XKCD. No, APOD is short for Astronomy Picture of the Day. I'm sorry for not breaking that down. Hey. I'm in the middle of the show. All right. I'm in the middle of the show. You, you might want to step out. <laughs> so, weekly show, you should know by now. <laughs> <laughs> that weekly show, yes. Is that Vic? That is Vic. Yes. But you can mute him, Jason. Up to Riverside. You're interrupting my interview, bro. I know. How how oh, rude. Got, Vic's bigger than I am. That's true. Hey, um, JD, <laughs> don't you have JD? Don't you have someone lined up to ask Louie a question? Oh, I do. I do. I do. But first, they, we do have a question in the chat room. Um, we have absolutely true. Um, what's the best time of the day to submit crack? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not awake to bury it, that's when. <laughs> no, um, the best time of the day to submit it is when they drop the stories. <clears throat> yeah, they don't stay much. They don't stay there long. When is that? <laughs> it's all over the board again. But uh, it used to be. Uh, it used to be anywhere at 5 a.m. Pacific Coast time, or 5:04 a.m. or 5:24 a.m. Or 537 a.m., but now they're all over the board. Now so they're all over the board. Down. We've got another question for you. This one, um, we have a special guest here who would like to ask you a question. Hi, this is Chuck Norris. <laughs> Did you steal two kilos of cocaine? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I did, and I profited greatly. <laughs> Chuck Norris is not <laughs> Did you steal two kilos of cocaine? Yes, I did. So, not only did the Mario guys not make uh, the top trending list, 
uh, but because of Chuck Norris on Twitter, Chuck Norris took over this show also. Chuck Norris has <laughs> yeah. toned us yeah. all. What the hell? What, what? Chuck is pretty bad. Why do you do it? Why do you do that, and Chuck? And I don't mean bad like in Michael Jackson bad. <laughs> well, well, no, he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's got him one up on uh, Michael uh, Michael Jackson as it is. <laughs> Excellent. Now, um, really, some of the other things that I've saw, uh, I've seen videos of you skating and what you did during the day on YouTube. I, I in fact, I think I've seen actually more things released in social media about you in the last year and a half, almost two years that I've known you and watched you than I have from probably any other digger. Uh, why is that? What, what's made you so popular? What's made you so accessible? And do you think that, uh, and this might be a two-part question, but do you think this has part to do with your success, is your availability and your uh, the way you contact and uh, speak with everybody? Yeah, I kind of, um, I, when I got into this, I didn't really know what I was doing at all, but um, one thing I knew was to be myself and not be basement jumper twenty seven hiding in a hiding in mommy's basement somewhere and having a secret name. So I just decided to go ahead and throw my real name out, my real website. Um, Google me. Uh, come to my house with a gun. I got an answer. If you want to serve me papers, I got a lawyer. It's all good. No problem. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I could come find me, come talk to me. I have nothing to hide at all. That was kind of my uh, my deal. And uh, then I kind of uh, kicked it up a notch and did a little self promoting and uh, and um, you know went to like a dig meetup in San Francisco and met some people. And uh, yeah, even up to yesterday, there's this. Uh, there's this bitch in a contest going to happen in uh, Huntington Beach next weekend, and uh, they're building the ball. It's it's uh, incomplete, but I was uh, rolling around that a little bit last night. So I just I just get on news. I have, uh, I just film whatever. I don't care. Well, yeah, I saw a picture of you with uh, Andy, Mr. Baby Man, and uh, Kevin Rose. Uh, he he does some at digging. I'm not quite sure. I'm not paying attention. I was too busy digging. But anyway, I don't um, know those guys. Oh, you're a digging here. Well, <laughs> what was uh, well um, what were they like to hang out with? Now I know that you know Andy and you and Victor shared actually, a brand sandwich with them both. But uh, actually, to tell you the truth, um, I see Edie in here. Uh, that would be Tom Boyce. She was also there. Um, she would probably remember more about that night than I did, because I think I was about 12 uh, rum and cokes in that night, so I don't remember no, I a lot. No, I remember, dude. You were, uh, oh, yeah, Vic was uh, there, too. With his, you were there with your great um, iPhone camera to capture the moment. That was special. Yeah, no, talk about, uh, you know, shooting in bad lighting. Oh, man. I can't, that picture was so bad. But in any case, yeah, I remember how many drinks you had. I ended up having the drop you off your house, man. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about that. Sorry. And thanks. You were the one that did that? Yeah. Thanks. Might as well. Yeah, he was on the way back to me. Yeah, Vic and his cousin drew out my drunk ass off. That was funny. Yeah. Awesome. Oversight on my part. <laughs> so, Louie. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm here and I'm drunk. How do I go home? <laughs> Louie, I have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah, Edie's, Edie's saying that... Um, we almost got kicked out for filming too. Yeah, that <laughs> I remember that too. Just little spots of that night. Anyway, <laughs> next nice. question. Um, what do you think of Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince? Uh, I don't watch any of that stuff. I don't think anything of it. All right. <laughs> Can we uh, cut him off now, please? <laughs> no, I haven't watched it either. I didn't even know what it was. It's not like a. Is that like a kid show or a cartoon or something? I really have no clue. It's, no, it's a skateboarding show. Yeah. Um, Harry Harry Potter is a uh, famous skater. He's um, he 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 goes to the skate place called Hogwarts, and um, it's the the Half Blood <laughs> Prince is um, is Tony Hawk. Uh huh. So even skater fans, you can go see it too. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. happen. So. Um, Next topic. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you, uh, 
was your favorite story that you ever submitted on Dig? I mean, everyone has something, and, and last week we didn't acknowledge her, but uh, absolutely true was the one that broke the Michael Jackson news. I, th I think it's got like 29,000 digs right now. It's, it's the big, biggest, most popular uh, death dig that's ever been posted on Dig. Um, now, well, do you ever have a story like that? One that just went viral and, and did all sorts of things? Uh, I don't know. I think I've probably got somewhere around. Yeah, that's all I know is Tony Hawk. Um, I don't know. Probably 10 or 15 grand in digs. Okay, yeah, but it was not specialty or anything? No, it was probably an image. Okay. You know, Anybody else? No. No, Kate, um, those stories don't uh, get those kinds of bigs. They don't. <sighs> Excellent. Crack, taco. Fun stuff, but not, uh, doesn't, doesn't get, like, doesn't, those don't stand out. After you submit about a hundred of them, they get kind of boring. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Louie, you two are definitely welcome to stay on, and um, we appreciate having you. We appreciate your digs, your tweets, and all that good stuff. Um, and I do want to have to bring up another topic a little bit later with you anyway, so if you could definitely stay on with us. I want to grab uh, grab one last story. An answer to it, because I was going to ready to bring in that, but that was how it's going to end it. But that's fine. We can do that right before we leave. I messed everything up now. Bad. Bad, hey, JD. It's been an honor, gentlemen. No, stay. Don't, uh, yeah. don't, don't, don't say stay. the honor part until we're done. <laughs> We're well, I was officially you. saying goodbye to my part of it, so you guys can yap on about the next Harry Potter topic or whatever. Yeah, yeah there ain't gonna be no Harry Potter stuff. So, Harry Potter. Good, good. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. so yes, thank you definitely, definitely. Uh, Victor, tell us a little bit about what happened between TechCrunch and Twitter and documents and uh, billions and billions of users. You know, it, it's pretty interesting. So essentially what happened is uh, TechCrunch received a, a nice little uh, tidbit of confidential, totally private insider uh, Twitter information. They received over 300, um, you know, documents and uh, secret screenshots of uh, basically the future of Twitter. And, uh, you know, TechCrunch is run by um, Michael Arrington, and he's usually known for uh, getting the leak on all sorts of crazy information on uh, startups and uh, technology companies. But this one's a little unusual in the sense that basically they somehow ended up with pretty much all of this insider info, right? And so they had to consult with Twitter as to exactly what they could reveal, um, to what extent can they actually post uh, the raw materials itself. And uh, it's pretty interesting because, I mean, Twitter's just all the rage in social media. No matter who you talk to, the growth rates, uh, the phenomenal reach it's been uh, am amassing over the past, you know, five, six months. It's just got everyone buzzing about it. And the fact that TechCrunch kind of has the future of Twitter uh, conceptually in its hands is a pretty powerful thing. And so they had to really kind of pick and choose and get approval for what they could and couldn't reveal. Um, and so if you go to the show notes, um, I believe it's uh, on the bottom of Ergo's last post. But there's a link to the uh, TechCrunch article itself, and uh, if anybody wants to, to take a look at it and browse it, um, you should uh, definitely check it out. Um, yeah, it's basically, basically, it's pretty interesting, just all the information. Oh, yeah. There. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's not just a simple, oh, so this is what Twitter's planning. There's a whole host of issues at hand. You know, there's acquisition talks, um, licensing talks with Microsoft, with Google, um, you know, we're talking uh, new API uh, terms of service. I mean, as, as, Brian, as Brian just said in the in the uh, we're from the audience, also uh, the password, uh, the how they got in to one of the servers was the word password. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, tip tip to your uh, webmasters. Um, if you're gonna have a main backend account with the username <laughs> of your creator, don't make the password password. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Jason. Mark. I'm sorry. Damn, I have to update all my blogs again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The old admin uh, username, password, password just doesn't cut it anymore, I guess. Well, he used to, at least. 
But I, I liked uh, some of the, uh, I, I read through most of the documents on there that they released, and uh, one of the things I liked was uh, their lofty goal of being the first social network to have one billion users. Uh, and then they say that if we had a billion users, uh, that would be the pulse of the planet. So mm -hmm. that's what Twitter is going for, to be the pulse of the planet. You know, that, you know, that lofty goal reminds me of another friend of mine, uh, Zaibatsu's lofty goal of <laughs> 500,000 followers. I like that. You know, Did he get that many already? No. Remember when he was making that push? Maybe yeah. he still is. I haven't talked to him for a little while. We, uh, yeah, I mean, I think if anyone can do it, um, you know, if, if, if growth rates and trends are any indication, I mean, at this rate, if, you know, it doesn't slow down all that much. Twitter can achieve that number well within a year, year and a half. Easy. Yeah, uh, how many of those accounts, though, do you think are real ones? <laughs> well, I'm sure they don't have that many, but there's so many yeah. lots on Twitter now. Every yeah, you're right. single one of them. I mean, granted, probably most of the accounts are one-time users, people who, you know, created a Twitter just because okay. someone pushed them into it, and you know, chances are they'll tweet a little bit, um, but they're not really uh, sticking with it for the long haul. So I think if you identify users as people who have accounts, sure, they can probably hit that number. But in terms of real users, people who are actually embracing the technology and using it on a somewhat day-to-day -day basis, I mean, those numbers are a whole lot different. Yeah, and I'm just looking. It looks like uh, they laid out their goal on how many years it's going to take, and it looks like uh, looks yeah. like Jason. I seem to have lost you on audio. If you are there, I can't hear you anymore. And there you go. Coming back, Jason. Um, what he was saying was is that basically um, if you are a Twitter user and you want to to build up an account it's not possible to get it up to those big big numbers unless you uh, basically you know, let's say let's let's call it what it is we uh, spam it um, and I do believe that we're going to be talking about that here soon with a another special guest but in the meantime I'm going to while we wait for Jason to get back on Skype and reset the call, call on Skype. I actually, the funny part is, guys, I don't know if they even know that they're not. They could be talking. It looks like Pat's talking. We can't hear you guys. Call. And I will wait for them to call me back. Jason should be calling us back in a second. In the meantime, uh, we are about to hit onto some open lines and bring in some guests from the audience. <laughs> They're trying to read Pat's lips. Pat, use sign language. If you, if you know how to do sign language, please use it. And we're back! Again? Did you get Louie? Yeah, there's Louie. Yeah, he's back. Okay. I think we got the whole works. What happened, Jason? No, that was me. That was totally you. You were the only one that dropped there, JD. Yeah, well, nope. That on me. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's not always your fault. I'll, I'll admit. Sometimes it is me. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, what were we saying when we get disconnected here? Um, are, we, are we broadcasting? You are broadcasting. Okay. Oh, you know, we're, we're talking about some of the Twitter stuff. The uh, little developments, leaks of the info that TechCrunch seems to have gotten their grubby hands on yet again. <laughs> I mean, I don't know to speculate. It's just they are these scoop monsters, and usually they don't consult with companies to determine what they do and don't release. Usually they're just going to, you know, paste everything in one article, you know. Whereas but here, they're, they're very careful. What surprises me, though, is I, I thought the, uh, whoever it was that hacked into here was going to release it to many different news sites, and it's... Okay. Crunch was the only one that got the details. 
Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the way it goes with Michael Arrington's publication. They, they're, they're somehow kind of like the TMZ of startup news. I guess. You know, they, they get the exclusives. I mean, Michael Arrington's got collections galore. So, you know, it's expected that if anyone would get this kind of insider info package, I mean, the way they made it seem was that it just, like, you know, dropped in their lap, which was, I find it kind of hard to believe. I think that there's something fishy going on, but hey, that's just me. I love that. That's that's actually awesome. You we we can do breaking news. TMZ buys TechCrunch because they're the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's called. Well, uh, no, they no. could because TMZ is owned by AOL. AOL has money. I think AOL so. buys TMZ and uh, they they Very TMZ, good. then TMZ okay. buys TechCrunch and we call it um, TechMZ. TechMZ. <laughs> this week's show brought to you by TechMZ. New conglomeration in entertainment and technology that brings Michael Arrington and Britney Spears together. You heard it here first. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like mashup show of the year. Mashup show of the year. Love it. <laughs> and Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson. So, um, so from the story, we know that that Twitter is going to have a billion users. They're going to take over the world. And if you ever want to hack into them, just remember password. Okay. Well, going back to what, uh, are, are we done with this? No, you you have more to say. We're just waiting on you. It's your world. No, no, uh, no, no. More to say on, on the uh, TechCrunch and the Twitter. And the, no, I'm talking about, I want to go back and, and before we lose people, I wanted to, uh, now that we got both gentlemen in here, I wanted to ask the question. There is a big race between social media elite stars Oh boy, and Louis Bow. The first one to 10,000 followers on Twitter. Yeah. That ruined our relationship. That I hate is. JD. He's a bad What did y'all bet? What was the bet? We bet a steak, and guess what? He bought me as a steak. Chicken fried <laughs> steak. <laughs> he bought me a chicken fried steak as my steak dinner, my victory dinner. Well, it's still a steak. It was a steak, well, technically. The, the script you got to get all those followers beforehand probably cost more than that. Yeah, exactly. Um, it really there, it. There's no such... Uh, what's a script? <laughs> what's a script? We don't talk script on Social Blade. Are we are crazy? There's no script. Hey, hey, guys, guys, guys. I use that movie script every day. Yeah. That was just... Movie movie. Oh, bad with computer. That was, that was a good post. Yeah. That was the post of the year. Uh, well, yes, Amy. I did. Amy asked if I ordered the chicken fried steak. I actually did, and it was a very pleasant. I'm I'm ripping on Louie, uh, it, but it was it was fun, and it goes to show how Twitter has changed. Back then, Twitter was a it was almost like an arms race. It was a matter of growth and adding what what Twitter likes to use the term churn. You add a bunch of people, you give them a day or two to follow you back, and if they don't, you unfollow everybody that didn't, and then you keep adding. And that was when Twitter was the wild, wild west. I mean, there were times where we were gaining, you know, hundreds if not thousands of followers every single day. Then back around, I believe it was April 20th, they cut that off and made it to where you can only follow um, up to 1,000 people a day. And that pretty much slowed it down. And then again, three weeks ago, they dropped it down to 500. So the chances of somebody coming on, not being a celebrity, even if they have the most interesting tweets in the world, the best they could ever uh, hope to expand is at a rate of approximately two to three hundred um, per day. You know, and that's, it that's actually, by the way, looks like it might be back to a thousand. Just uh, FYI. Really? And that's coming from a programmer, so I'd probably take that to heart. Breaking news: Twitter, just, Twitter goes uh, back up to a thousand. <laughs> you heard it here first. Throw, you, throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the churn yes. back on. All right, Louie, we're racing to 100,000 now. Um, oh, JD no, no. <laughs> you first. Um, Jason, I'm going to need to consult you. <laughs> Winner take all. Yes. Um, the, the chat, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop looking at the chat room because that's, that's, uh, that is throwing me off. Some amazing, amazing commentary in there. Um, Jason, were, were you able to get a, uh, any special guests on? I was trying to get Russ on here. I have of numbers also. Let me see if I can break of numbers and numbers. Let's see, we're ringing. Bye. 
Uh, we should have uh, Rust on in it as well. He's just getting his Skype set up. So, uh, does this have numbers with us? Oh, you gotta speak up a little bit. You're uh, a little quiet. Uh, Testing? Are you there? Yeah. Ah, there okay. we go. Trying to get it. I, I hear, him. I hear him now. I I hear him well. Um, is that what we're going to call you? Is you are we going to use the term of numbers for now? Or is there a real name we can call you? Jake. 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 Nice yeah. having you on the show, Jake. Yeah, Jake. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How's everybody today? Doing well. Doing well. Awesome. Awesome. Finally, we talk, Jake. That's Louie, by the way. I, I'll be honest, I, I can't tell whose voice is who yet, but I'll get it in a minute. No, this I is can't Louis. either. I just keep talking. That's Pat. You can tell Pat. <laughs> so, so, Jake, uh, what's on your mind here? Uh, what uh, brings you to the show? Oh, nothing okay, much. Well, I. I just drinking coffee, you know. Got invited last week. The yeah, last show was great, you know. <laughs> so, uh, this one's also... Oh, I, know, I know something you can talk about. Why don't you tell us how bitch in the um, skate parks in o Oregon are. I'm sure everybody wants to know that. Uh, and, um, <laughs> can somebody give that dog a biscuit and shut it up? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Give <laughs> the dog a biscuit or something. <laughs> yeah, I I personally haven't seen any skate parks up here yet, Louis. So I, I wouldn't recommend you come up here looking for one because they're obviously not that popping. Actually, it's uh, the the best state in the United States with the uh, most amount of kick-ass skate parks. Just FYI. By far. Okay. <laughs> Just letting you know. A little, dropping a little skate park knowledge on you. Today's show brought to you by SkateboardMagazine.com. Hello? Russ, are you with us also? Hello? Russ, can you hear me? Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, can I hey. hear you? Well, you I, can, I can hear people. So, um, Russ. We also have Russ uh, of Spill.com with us here. Ah. Oh. I don't know. Hey, Russ, how you doing? It's from uh, if you Dig. You guys don't know what Spill is. Uh, Spill's my favorite uh, movie mm -hmm. review site. Um, and yeah, he's randomized on uh, Dig, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. It's a little delayed. It's a little delayed, so I'll try not to talk over you guys. Ah. Now here's what happens. Uh, you don't yeah, want to listen on stream. stream. Listen just on Skype. Yeah, mute, mute your stream. Yeah, I just want to mute. All right, and then uh, turn your vo volume on Skype up, and you, everything should be good. Apparently, I'm really muffled. Also, I'm not sure why. Apparently, the the volume sucks this time. And guys, I do apologize. Um, Jason's been trying to talk me into getting the mixer. I will get the mixer before next show, I promise. We're trying to, to rig it together like Jason was able to do, and I'm just not not the skilled the skilled tech person that he is. So next week we'll, we'll get there. Uh, we're, we're, this, guys. we're still just starting out on this. Um, this is show it out. I figured it out. Thanks, Sam. So. All right, Jason, you're the worst, so you can't talk anymore. Um, <laughs> Russ, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. I did want to ask Jake a question. Jake, can you hear me? What? Jake? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Um, one of the reasons that we had talked last week about putting you on the show, there was a, a very heated debate that was in the chat room, um, and I can actually debate in either direction. So if you don't mind, let's, uh, let's bring the, the show up to speed. And tell us a little bit about what was happening last week and what you wanted to, to talk about. Uh, Spicy. Uh, actually, you know, it was just a pretty one-sided argument, and I figured it was over. I imagined you guys wanted us to come back to, you know, continue on the ship plane. 
<laughs> that was oh, yeah, that's, that's always fun. Yeah, that's always. What? Uh, what ship flinging? Is that a real term, or is that something up on the East Coast? Take oh, uh, shit. Oh, no, drove far again. And here goes uh, our clone tag there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We, we, we should uh, PG-13 uh, PG here, guys. We were officially <laughs> just dropped by Harry <laughs> Potter. He did it first. <laughs> so, uh, JD, uh, bring us up to the speed here. Uh, what was it that uh, was being debated last week? It was um, discussing the, the concept that um, by having lots of Twitter followers and by by generating a, a large following on Twitter, um, not in a organic way, we'll say, but by, by the way that we were discussing earlier through churn, um, that basically that does not make you necessarily a social media expert. Is that pretty much the sum of it? Yep. Yeah, definitely, because most people try to act like it means that they, you know, are very, very popular, and it isn't uncommon for some people to unfollow, you know, a good percentage of the bots they have followed in the first place later on. And pretty much what it takes to be a social media expert in, in Twitter is, is some girl signs on, puts, puts a nice hot picture up, like, hey, look at me, I got, I got boobs, I'm real, I'm an actual girl, I'll respond to you. And uh, 3,000 followers later, oh my god, I'm a social media expert. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I mean, uh, I've probably succumbed to that as well. Oh, I'm going to follow her. Ooh, I'm going to follow her too. You know? yeah, I'm just going to already say, should I stop doing that now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use it. It's okay, I guess. <laughs> I, I definitely don't think that it makes you a social media expert by doing it, but it does get your name out there at least. That's it makes you a maven. But I mean, uh, I, unfortunately, dude, there's a, what, there are going to be a billion people on Twitter, um, and without doing something like this, uh, unfortunately, you know, there's no good way to uh, get your own out if you're just starting. Unfortunately. Um, yes, it makes you a little bit like a spammer, um, but it, I guess it really matters with what you're tweeting after that. Um, if you're just doing and then tweeting without spamming, I don't see it being a huge issue, but uh, if you are following people and then all you're tweeting out afterwards or links that uh, are selling whatever, um, I think it's bad. The magpie! Yeah, magpie, exactly. Magpie, magpie! There's a couple things you can do. I mean, uh, I play poker, so every time I type the word poker into my uh, stream, I get at least five or ten poker random Twitter accounts following me. If you type the word fuck, which is why I make sure it's just type F-C-K, if you type the word F-U-C-K, you will get 20 porn spam bots following you within like, 20 minutes. Perfect. I'm going to start tweeting. I want those guys. <laughs> 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 I need a little bit of class in my stream. <laughs> yeah. Are they are, are they yeah, just gonna be the are they gonna be a mixture or just the gay porn guys? Because I gotta <laughs> shut up those guys. I mean, it's probably dudes with just chicks as the pictures, but uh, you know, I haven't actually checked out the sites. I don't, I don't trust them. I, I stick to U porn. Might might go a uh, little over the PG thirteen. I'll stop that right now. Oh <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. <coughs> hey, um, if, if possible, we have, I'm, I'm getting lots and lots and lots of requests. What I would like to do now, if possible, and this is actually Pat, Jason, Vic, you guys tell me what you think. Um, I would love to close the show and then basically reopen it and continue to record, like, like have two separate recordings of the show because it looks like there's a lot of people that want to come on, talk, and we can have a, a post-show that's also a recorded version. This is a, a on-the-fly decision, so we're calling an executive board vote meeting. Thanks. What do you think, Pat? I don't care. Don't yeah, go with me. Whatever y'all want to do. See, let's give it a shot. You know. Very good. I think you should bring all. I think you should bring all the girls in. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Kind of well, soft. then I don't want to get off the show if we do that. It's a sausage fest tonight for Pete's sake. I don't want, if you're going to bring yeah. girls in, I don't want to start, stop recording now. <laughs> yeah, this ain't no sausage fest. This is uh, twitter.com slash makingpornsite311. How y'all doing tonight? You want to follow me? I got porn sites up the yin-yang. 
Oh, uh, party your at Uh, what? What? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We've got Latoya Twitter here, so. Uh, oh my God! Oh, great. <laughs> And on that note, we should probably wrap up the main show. <laughs> no, no, don't y'all wrap up on me, guys. Come on, not yeah, on me. Yeah, I mean, insert yo dog joke here. Are you trying to steal so, my thunder? Finish show, so you can watch your show while you watch your show. <laughs> you can't be getting at all my tweeters. I'm going to say I'm on the phone. That reminds me, special guest next week, Tequila Tequila. Be on the lookout. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Um... Again, I wanted to. Right now, what are you talking about? <laughs> I want to thank what all of our doctors? thank all of our guests who who were on here. Um, Jason, you 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 brought some excellent guests today. Followed the uh, the Mario Brian Marathon. And John from Mario Marathon. Yes, yes, Brian and John from from Mario Marathon. Excellent. We had Louis Barr on today. That was very fun. Pat, Vic, and Jason. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and and say goodbye. So, thank you. And All right, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Thirty people one time. So that's great. Uh, yeah. And make sure to awesome. Uh, awesome. Make sure to to visit every Thursday, at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern at socialblade.com/slash/show.